Last year, after just moving into my cabin and the winter setting in just a couple short months later is when I found myself to truly be alone in remote Alaska. My cabin backs up to Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which happens to be the largest national park in the nation. It's over 15 million acres of pristine wilderness with several glaciers and volcanoes and a ton of wildlife. And the road that I live on, at least the stretch of road where I live, isn't populated other than myself. There are other cabins on this road, but not near my cabin. In fact, they're several miles away from where I live. And there's nobody across the road from me either. So I'm truly alone in remote Alaska. But over the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to get to know some people here in the community. The first person that I met is the chief of the volunteer fire department. That volunteer fire department serves a huge area with a couple hundred people in the area. And he's got a civic duty to look after those in the community, whether it's assisting the local utility company because there's a tree on the power line that's set ablaze or it's taking food to a shut-in or in my case as you know assisting a silly blonde who decides to get up on her metal roof after a night's rain so she can clean her chimney. Now yes I did contact the fire chief just to alert him that I was getting up there because if I had fallen off the roof I needed somebody to know what was going on. That was definitely the right thing to do. He did come check on me when I failed to tell him that I got off the roof. But again, that is his civil responsibility based upon the role that he has agreed to take on in the community. And so I do want to thank him for that. And then recently I also met another gentleman who lives further down the road, again, several miles. And he and his wife do some outreach in the community and work with veterans in the area. Getting to know these individuals in my community has allowed me the opportunity to join them on another caribou hunt. And so I'll be heading out tomorrow to go on the hunt. Now, the last time we went out, we were hoping to see caribou like this. Unfortunately, after hours of glassing, we didn't see a single caribou. But word has come in that the caribou are on the move. And so tomorrow we'll head out and it'll be a whole different situation this time. Because of the snowfall that we recently have had, we will be dealing with that as we go out on our hunt. So hopefully we have a good hunt. So with any luck, 
I'll get a caribou for the freezer. But it gives me an opportunity today to go through my EDC bag. This is a pretty robust amount of items that I have at my fingertips at all times, but I know that I might still have some items that are missing from my kit. And so if you can think of something that maybe you carry in your kit that I don't have here, or that maybe you don't have, but you would like to have, and you suggest that I have it as well, leave that in a comment down below because I'm always learning from you guys. I thank each and every one of you for your comments because your comments help teach me some things that I have known before. And I know others in the community are listening as well. And speaking of community, I wanted to address a couple of things. One is that at certain points I've put out community post, which is a feature that YouTube allows creators to communicate with their subscribers and people outside of their subscriber base as well. However, I think those really are mainly seen on mobile devices and not everybody sees them. I also know that shorts are another way where people are using that platform to communicate with their subscribers, but not everybody is seeing shorts. So going forward, when I need to put out a short video to get just a quick message out to everybody to let you know how I'm doing or, you know, something that might be coming up or what have you, instead of doing a community post, I'm just going to do just a short length video and I'll title them community post so that you know it's not a full vlog, it's just a quick update. The exception to that will be if I have a power outage. So I had previously said that my videos post on Thursday, but for the last few months I've had power outage after power outage after power outage and the need to get a generator is becoming more and more prevalent. But until the budget allows for that, um, just know that if my video doesn't come out by Friday, then, you know, chances are either I'm still without power or there's something else going on. Editing alone here, breaking in with an important message to let you know that the videos that you're watching were filmed and edited in the same week that they're posted to YouTube. So if a video doesn't come out, Typically, it means I've had a power outage. Also, please understand that this is a full-time job for me on top of my full-time job, on top of maintaining a 70-year-old cabin in a remote area of Alaska. So your patience is much appreciated. Thank you. So if I can get a community post out um, just using my um, cell phone, I will, as long as I have cell signal. But I do want to make everybody aware that there you will start seeing some shorter length videos titled Community Post, and that's so that everybody can see those readily. One other thing is, is that I have an Instagram account, but I am going to be abandoning that um, for personal reasons. And so I know there are a number of you who love to communicate with me on Instagram, but going forward, I'm not going to be logging into Instagram. So you're more than welcome to communicate with me via the comments down below, or if you have access to email, you can email me directly, but I um, am not going to be using Instagram. There's just some things going on with that platform and I need to step away from it. So that's why I haven't been on there in quite some time. And I just wanted to give you an update. So in case you're reaching out to me on there and you're wondering why I'm not responding, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just that, yeah, I'm not going on there. And so I'm moving away from that subject. And one more thing is speaking of comments, I just wanted to let everybody know too that as the channel is growing, um, I'm doing my best to keep up with the comments and 
members get priority response to the comments. So when the channel members and Patreon members, PayPal members, when they leave a comment, I respond to them right away. And outside of that, I do my best to respond to each and every one of you. But I don't get to everybody um, right away. And sometimes I don't see the comments for whatever reason. And so I just want to put it out there that if you have made a comment on a video and I have not yet responded, but you see somebody above you or somebody below you has gotten a response, please don't feel like I'm ignoring you. It's just the way the comments appear for me and how I'm able to get to them. So I do make an attempt to respond bond to everybody though. So I appreciate your comments. And as I've said before, I appreciate it when you watch the videos and when you uh, subscribe and when you give these videos a thumbs up, all of that means a lot to me. So thank you. into the meat of today's video is that I want to share with you the things that I carry in my go bag. This go bag is what I would consider my EDC bag, my everyday carry bag. It's not the same as the items that I showed in episode 18. Those are for vehicle emergencies. Those are the things that I carry in my vehicle to help my vehicle get unstuck or to trek my way out of the back country or to diagnose what might be happening to my vehicle if my vehicle should break down. And it's not the items that I showed in my last uh, winter prep video for my winter survival kit that I carry in the car. That is to help me, you know, stay warm and fed should I need to remain in my vehicle for a long period of time. Um, say in a winter snowstorm or some other type of emergency that I can't trek my way out. These things are the things that I carry for various reasons, no matter where I'm going. It doesn't matter if I'm running up the road to go check my mail or if I'm running across the state to go shopping. These are the items that I have with me every one of those trips. Now, I know there are a number of women, especially, and I'm sure men too, who don't carry an, an everyday carry bag. They don't think about the items that they're carrying on their person or at finger, you know, at their fingertips. And I want each and every one of you to just give it a little bit of thought and to think about you know, should something happen to you or to someone who's nearby you even, the things that I'm going to show you today might help save somebody's life and it might be your own. So what I am sharing with you today are just some essentials. This is a pretty robust kit, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about some of these items but I just want to give some awareness is basically what I'm getting at here. So when I'm putting together an everyday carry bag, one of the first things that I'm thinking about is my clothing. There's the clothing that I wear, you know, on my person, but then should something happen to my clothing and I need to put on dry clothes or if I am having to uh, trek out and, you know, I, I get a rip in my clothes, such as you can see in my jeans here, and I need to have a change of clothes, that's the first thing that I carry in my bag. And I'm just carrying mainly base layers. So I have an extra long sleeve t-shirt. I have a pair of leggings, and then I do have one clean over shirt typically, as well as, you know, other undergarments and socks. Typically, the outer layers that I have are going to carry me through. 
but just in case I always start out with clothing. That's the first thing that I'm going to think about when I'm packing my go bag is what clothing items do I have? And then on top of my base layers, I do look at, you know, making sure that I have hats with me and scarves or a neck gaiter for the warmer months, as well as not only do I have a knit cap in here, of course, but then I also have a baseball cap, um, you know, something to keep the sun out of my eyes. In my vehicle, I do have sunglasses, but I don't carry them in my go bag. Then on top of the clothing items that I carry, I carry a variety of gloves. You know, I have knit gloves, but then I also have, I have gloves that are meant for different types of tasks. So I have gloves that are meant for keeping my hands warm that I carry in the vehicle. And then I have different types of work gloves in here too, because protecting my hands is essential. And then speaking of protection, I do carry uh, an array of protective items on me and in my go bag as well. And one of the very first things that I recommend for women that when you're out and about, if you are not one to build safe using a firearm, you might consider looking into getting a neck knife. Now, this is a neck knife I picked up a couple of years ago, and it's just a real simple little knife. You know, your fingers wrap around, you, it has a thumb grip, so you can defend yourself. It's under three inches, so in most places, this is gonna be considered for legal carry. And it just slips right into this Tyvek sheath. And it has a normally like a shoelace type cord that comes with it. But I didn't want to make it obvious when I was working that I had a weapon on me or that I had something utilitarian um, on me. You know, I didn't want to draw attention to myself. So I replaced that with a heavy duty uh, decorative necklace. And that way, you know, if I have this on and I had on a blazer for work or a dress or something, um, where I could slip this in my blouse or I could slip this, you know, um, where it could not be seen, I knew it where it was and I could grab it quickly if I felt threatened by, you know, someone approaching me that I didn't know in a parking lot or whatever and I could extract that knife quickly and easily. So for my female viewers who are looking for an easy way of having a defense mechanism on you, this is one thing that I recommend. In addition to that, on my keychain, I always carry mace with me and I make sure that I check that mace, you know, the expiration on it, and that I replace it every couple of years as need be because it does go bad. It can actually um, not perform for you when you need it if, if you let it sit for too long. So, so that's the very first thing I carry. Now I do have some additional knives that I carry in the go bag too. You know, I carry a pocket knife and I carry a Leatherman, but I also carry a larger knife um, in my bag. And, you know, this is going to carry me if I'm walking in the woods and I need to create kindling or I need to, you know, butcher something. I hate to say that, but to be honest with you, that's what it's for. Um, this is the knife that's going to get me through. And so, you know, this is a really nice knife to have. When you're looking for a knife, you want to make sure that the knife that you're getting is a full solid tang, meaning that that blade runs not only from the tip to the handle, but from the tip all the way through the handle to the bottom of the knife. You don't want a knife that's just a partial tang and stuck into the handle. It will break and you will be very, very sorry. Um, there was a knife that I used in the video where Mike had sent me um, the box of bubble wrap and uh, the plastic for the loft and what have you. 
and someone had asked me what that knife is. I don't know the exact model of that knife, but I do know that it is not a solid tang knife. It's just a very cheap buck knife. And to be honest with you, it's a knife I use around the house for like odds and ends, miscellaneous slicing of packing tape more than anything it gets used for. It's not a knife I'd carry in the field by any means. It's not a knife that I would think of for defense or for, um, you know, outfitting type things. This is the type knife you want. So that's one of the other things that I do carry in my bag. Now, if you're new to this channel, what you might not realize, unless you're looking behind me, is that I am a gun advocate. And so I do carry a gun on me every single day. I live in a remote cabin uh, in a very remote location in Alaska. I don't have any neighbors near me. My nearest neighbor, my nearest neighbor is several miles away and there's wildlife on my property at any given time, bears, moose, wolves, wolverines. And so I do carry um, a firearm on me every day, but I also carry different firearms with me when I leave the property. What I carry with me when I'm on the property is my 357 mainly. That's the one that I always have around my hip in my leather holster. When I leave the property or if I'm just walking out my front door and sitting on my front doorstep, I'm not going to holster up just for that. And what I carry then is um, my 10 millimeter. This is a Smith & Wesson. It's a 10 millimeter. And this I carry in my go bag when I go and then it gets locked up should I need to go into some place where I'm not able to conceal carry. If I am concealed carrying though, this gun is a little too big for me to conceal carry. So when I conceal carry, I am carrying a 38 Special. And that gun is petite enough that I can hide it upon my person and yet I can access it easily if I find that I'm in a situation where the need to draw my weapon arises. I do recommend also that if you are going to carry a firearm, that you know how to use it, that you practice with that firearm, you become comfortable with that firearm, and that you understand your firearm inside and out, that you know how to clean it and maintain it. Because if you don't know how to operate your gun, it's not going to do you any good. So become familiar with your weapon and practice, practice, practice. That's the first thing I want to say to anybody who's looking to carry a firearm. So then my last line of defense that I carry on me, similar to my mace, is I carry a can of bear spray. Now, when I am in the vehicle, I always have one of these up right by my head in the vehicle so that I can grab it quickly um, should something happen while I'm in the vehicle. But when I am going out, if I need to exit the vehicle and I need to hike my way out someplace, then this goes on my belt um, so that it's at my fingertips and I can grab it when need be. It's also something that I do carry on my person when I'm out and about on the property. A lot of times you guys can't see this because either it's back here where you can't see it or it's on the tripod and the tripod is just three feet in front of me so I can quickly get to the tripod and grab this. So bear spray is another thing. And again, I recommend that you become familiar with how to use this if you are going to be out and about in bear country. So those are just the first things that I carry in my um, EDC bag. And most of those things are for my protection. They're there for me. But then I have things that might come to the aid of others as well. If you look at episode 21, you'll see that I carry in my first aid kit at home a full trauma kit. 
I say full trauma kit. It's a pretty well-rounded trauma kit. But in the vehicle, I have a really nice trauma kit that was sent to me by one of my viewers. And, you know, that one stays in the vehicle. And on my bag, I carry a small trauma kit that is just attached to the front of the bag. This is a trauma kit that I could easily detach from the front of my bag and I could hand it off to somebody else if say I came across an, a major accident on the highway or some road and there were multiple victims, I could give this to somebody and have them administer first aid with this while I tend to somebody else with this one. This one slips into the back of my go bag. This does look really big. And yes, my go bag is incredibly heavy. Um, not as heavy as my tackle bag. I think my tackle bag's like 30 pounds. Um, you know, because I'm one of those. I'm a hoarder of tackle, I guess. And I don't like to leave home without it. So, um, but this is a well-rounded first aid kit that I put together. Um, if you want to see the things that I carry in my first aid kit and that I recommend you carry in your first aid kit, then I recommend that you check out episode 21. Episode 18 is the items I recommend you carry in your car. Episode 21 is um, why your first aid kit may not be the right thing for you and your household. So I'm not going to go over all the contents of this, but I do you know, want to mention that Sometimes when you're thinking about what you're going to carry on your person, it isn't all about yourself. It's about what, you know, situations you might wind up in and what um, do you have on you to help alleviate whatever the situation might be. And with that being said, I want to send out some well wishes to Marazon and to Carrie Ann. I hope you guys have a speedy recovery and get well soon. Some of the other things that I carry um, in my go bag are space blankets and uh, tarps so that, you know, if I need to make shelter somewhere, I can. Ponchos, I do believe. Yes, I have two ponchos here. And the reason for that is backups for backups. Um, you can never have too much gear as far as I'm concerned. You never know when something is going to come in handy. I do normally carry paracord in my go bag as well, and it looks like I need to replace it, but I do also carry some shoelaces in um, because in a pinch, these can do wonders. And of course, I carry means of starting fires. I carry lighters in my go bag as well as my vehicle, but I also carry um, a ferro rod that's F-E-R-R-O, if you're curious. And this basically, you know, takes a little practice to know how to use it, but it's got a little striker on it and you just scrape it off and then into your tinder and then give it a couple good strikes and you should be able to hopefully get a spark and start a fire if you have some nice light and dry tinder. Um, so I do carry this with me as well and because you know, matches get wet and even waterproof matches are not always fail proof and lighters run out. So it's good to know a couple different ways of starting a fire. And this is just one of the things that I keep at the ready. Um, I also make sure that I always have light with me because, um, you know, when the sun sets, you do need to be able to see and uh, that means I carry a headlamp with me. I carry various flashlights with me, you know, pin light, as well as um, heavy duty flashlights. And I carry spare batteries um, in my vehicle, or not in my vehicle, in my go bag for the vehicle. Some of these are for the lights and some of these are for my road flares and things like that. Um, batteries for my, v my battery jumper, my chainsaw that I carry in my vehicle, those things stay in the cabin and on top of the go bag so that when I grab this, I'm forced to grab those and then they go back into the vehicle. I don't leave batteries in the vehicle because as they get cold, they tend to not work. So.
green eye with me in my go bag. I'm filming. I'm filming. You want to be a, you want to be a movie star? You going to be a movie star? You going to be a movie star? Say say hello to the people. No? You don't want to say hello to your fans? Look at you got fans. Say hello. Say hello. No. You're going to mess up my stuff. You're going to mess it all up. You're going to mess it all up. Okay, up. Up. Dude, what are you doing? Do you don't need Kleenex? You don't even blow your nose. You don't even blow, you don't even blow your nose. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I was going to tell you that I carry a snake bite kit in my go bag. But to be honest with you, that was from the days of off-roading in Colorado. So don't need that. That's not a chew toy. Do not chew on that. Those scalpels will hurt you. Yeah. But I do carry I do carry go bags for Kenai too though. <laughs> You're such a goof. You're such a goof. Just you know, some things that you might want to consider and things that you might um, find useful for carrying in your everyday carry bag. Now there are other things here um, that I've not actually covered. But the reason for today's video is mainly just to give everybody a quick update as to what is going on with me and really to let you know that the hunt is back on. I'm so excited. So um, I am going to finish packing up my go bag, you know, putting in my personal hygiene items and my binoculars and, you know, walkie talkies so that... Uh, you know, there's some communication devices in case me and those in my group, I have more than just two of these, me and my group get separated. We uh, can communicate with each other and, you know, hopefully find our way back to one another. So I do want to thank each and every one of you for watching today's video. And um, I hope to report back to you soon with uh, good news from the hunt. So until next time, please stay safe and take care. And I will see you then. Thanks for watching.